Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. On this channel, my goal is to motivate, to inspire, and to encourage you to live your best life to the fullest. If this is your first time tuning into my channel, I like to say welcome. And if th this is, if you are returning, I like to say thank you so much for returning. This video is different from any of the other videos that I've, I've done, um, but I wanted to share it. This is an upscale kitchen for a seven-year-old, not a three or five-year-old. So everything was a little more, more difficult and ch I should say challenging, trying to find things to put together because she comes almost to my shoulder here. And a lot of things were made just for little, little younger kids. When you have someone that's in the kitchen with you, this is for my great granddaughter. She's in my kitchen with me every time. She's here, she wants to help. And doing things to encourage their culinary skills, things that they wanna learn um, while they're at that age of wanting to learn and wanting to help. Uh, my husband and I decided to put together a kitchen that she can still pretend, even though she helps me a lot when she's here um, and you know, with real food. We wanted to put together something that she can play because I experienced that with my sister and I coming up. You know, we had fun with this old metal kitchen sink and stove set that we played, played, played for hours. But I wanted her to be able to experience that feeling as well. So this did not take a day or two that we planned. This ended up taking a month, <laughs> but um, it was enjoyable and it was on and off. It wasn't like we was working straight through. But it was on and off because we were trying to acquire some of the things that we needed, didn't know what I was doing, but kind of felt my way through. So what I want to say to you, um, even if you don't know, have all the skills, like I did not, I'm not a carpenter or far from it, but um, using the things that I, I know and putting together what I had, that it came out very, very well. So I'm going to walk you through, I'm going to show video a lot in the beginning but because I didn't want this video to be too long, I'm gonna walk you through the end because otherwise it would have been an hour or so. And I did not want to this video to be that long. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through. <clears throat> we started out downstairs in the kitchen. We moved it upstairs in the foyer next to our bedroom because a lot of times we're upstairs and that way she doesn't feel like she's downstairs alone. And then I was able to expand it and pull our table out of her room and give her more space versus just a kitchen set, because I found out in the beginning she was sitting on the floor on her blanket in the kitchen to play with her dolls. And I said, no, that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna walk you through um, with the video. And some things, I did make mistakes. I did um, have to redo things. And, but I'm gonna walk you through and kind of show you what I did. This is the cabinet. Actually, it's two pieces. And we turned the top one upside down. Um, my neighbor gave this to us to try to figure out what to do with it. So this is my first time working with this as a, a DIY. And, but we're going to um, just tackle this and see how it comes out. As you can see here, um, this bottom, it lifts up. Let's see if I can get it for you, stay in view. That's how the bottom lifts up. We see some pieces here that are worn. This is pressed wood. This is not solid wood. And this top part here, we're gonna basically do away with all this together. And just see if we can just leave it here. So I'm taking you along with me on this project. She's excited. We've been picking up pieces and I've been doing a little YouTubing, trying to see how to do it during the winter months. Um, and give her some chance to perfect her little um, culinary skills. So just to give you a size on this, I'm gonna let her stand next to it on the other side, right there. With her standing next to it, you can see how tall this is. So this will be um, custom because it'll be age appropriate and it'll fit her good. How do you feel about this? I feel very excited. And actually, she's going to be helping to be a part of it. And this is something that we're doing during the winter months. I don't know if it's going to take one day or two, but we are going to get started and walk you along as we go. Okay, these are some of the things we picked up. We realized we were going to need handles. So you know me, I'm a clearance girl. They had these marked down from $5.98 to $2 at Lowe's. 
This is the handle for the stove and the handle for the cabinet under the sink. These I had got right before Christmas. These were a dollar a piece and this was at the Dollar Tree for her utensils, of course. This is a Folgers can that we're going to DIY and use as a chandelier um, to hang um, right up over the sink, over the sink light. And this is going to be our light that we're going to use that we got from Dollar Tree for a dollar. I did order these. I want more like realistic type ones. So these are our replacement knobs for the oven. And I'm going to leave the link for this below if anybody wants to tackle this project. But um, it was under $10. I think it was $7 or $8, but I will link the link below for that. We are going to use, this is a placemat that we are going to use to go up under the eyes uh, to serve as a, like a heat and tight panel for a little contrast. These are two dolls. Don't know which one I'm going to use. The smaller one I got from Walmart and the wider one I got from Lowe's. So whichever one I don't use, y'all know me, it's going back. <laughs> These are the tumbling blocks, what's left, that I got from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna be using these for the eyes on the stove. This right here, I don't know if you guys have ever saw this, but these are like the um, self-adhesive. Um, these are like subway tiles that we got for the Dollar Tree. I did get that a couple, about four months ago. Three months ago because I know we we're going to be doing it so I went back to get one more and I didn't have any and I like it because it gives it a realistic look and it's self self stick so how easy can you get three dollars I also got some contact paper and then I got from the Dollar Tree as well and this is going to be the full countertop marble full marble countertop um, right here these are self-adhesive hooks. Dollar Tree, again. And this is going to be just a hook for towels and stuff. The S hooks I bought from Lowe's, these are not fitting. I need more of a S. So I know I'm going to exchange these. And, but I just wanted to show you what we have. And the hardest thing, I think, was just trying to find a bowl for the sink. We tried the pet bowl. Um, I'm going to exchange this. This is too small from the Dollar Tree. And this is what I had already. And it's okay. It just looks a little beat up, which would have been okay. But then I lucked out. I went to Salvation Army. And they had this beautiful piece here. And even though I don't need the lid, but the inside looks brand new. And this is what we're going to use. The lip, the lip is pretty much the same size as this, as far as the, I should say the size. But the only difference is that this has a bigger lip. So that way it'll sit better down in the sink. So guys, I'm going to take you along with us. I did have some leftover sandpaper, and I think that's about all. Oh, we're going to need a rack. And I... Thankful for a dear friend of mine, um, Stephanie had a kitchen rack, I guess, that she didn't need. It's brand new. It was sitting the wrong size. I'm going to incorporate this into the cabinet. And this right here also, oh, by the way, that was free. And this right here came from Lowe's. Not sure how this is going to work. I wanted a realistic faucet. Without spinning arm and leg, this was only $19.99. So we're going to see if this works to go over the sink. And if so, then this is what we'll have for that. So at this point, we are going to get started. And by the way, if I didn't mention it, this was $4.99 for actually the sink base. So we're going to get started. These are the two pieces. As you can see, this is going to be the base. And we're going to just go ahead and clean this up right quick. Clean both pieces up. And we will be back. Okay, we laid the sink in place. 
And um, since this is a family project, I'm going to have her basically draw an outline. And this, guys, remember this was a placemat. Feels a little rubber, and that's why I liked it. I did go ahead and draw two lines. I measured it. If you're doing this, you would have to adjust it to whatever size that you're working with um, cabinet. So I'm going to basically get this cut and allow her to draw the line, and then I'll be back. I did go ahead and cut this. And as you can see, these edges are round, and I really like that effect. So what I did with the other piece, I just took it, laid this up here so I can get that same rounded effect and I just trace it. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those pieces. Okay, this is what I was looking for. My ends are rounded and this is where, I don't know if I'm gonna put it that way or this way, I think I'll use it this way. And I did go ahead and round the corners here. So this is where the eyes are gonna go. Um, the two eyes. We're gonna put the two eyes here. And the sink, sorry about that. The sink will be going here. You see my helping hand here. <laughs> so this is where we are going to um, have the faucet. And I think this faucet is gonna work. It is a laundry faucet. And we're gonna start drawing the layout here for the sink. Okay, the outside, as you see, was not showing up. We had two or three marks on here, so I did an inner line. I think the top is perfect around here. And what I have to had to end up doing in order for it to be visible is just use this um, this chalk writer that I got from um, Dollar Tree. I had this, and I'm just going to make this a little bit narrower. I don't want the the bowl to fall through. Okay, she is fast at work painting the grids to the, for the eyes on the stove. We have a total of 10, five for each one. So I'm gonna let her put the first coat on and I'm just using what I have at home, on hand. And what I have on hand is a bell spar and this is a um, semi-gloss. We use this in the house for touch-ups and stuff. So she's gonna go ahead and finish those. Okay, we have these um, jumbo blocks, these tower blocks, whatever. She did put one coat on, and I'm at the process, I'm gonna put another coat on and let this dry. Okay, the second coat has been applied, and you can basically use any type of paint from what I understand. Um, if I had black chalk paint, I would have used that. But with chalk paint, you do have to pull a, um, a poly acrylic or something on it just to protect it. So because this is a regular um, semi-gloss, I won't have to put another protective coat. So this should be dry shortly. Uh, okay, I can see that this is not perfect. Um, my husband did do the drilling, but everything I think pretty much a fit. We're going to do a dry fit right now. Josiah, see if the bowl fits. Okay. Is it in? Push it down. Yeah, if it's okay. perfectly, it's just a little loose. We have to put some um, caulk around the edge. Now, this isn't perfect, so I'm letting everybody know. Put that around first. Now, we're going to see if the, we didn't have the right tools we needed. So he used a drill, a paddle drill, which was too small, so we had to kind of fudge it. So see if that fits. Kind you don't have to push it all the way down. It's like kind of fits. Okay. And this is less things like that. This is where we're at right now. And I think this is turning, a, turning around really good. What I like about this, because it's real, it is swivel. So we're going to work on the other side, and then we're going to start working on the doors. Okay, this is the way it's looking so far. I think it's coming out very good. Um, with this here, we're gonna, I think, put the knobs here. We're having two eyes and the up and eye. And uh, we're gonna have that sitting here and we're gonna have the eyes actually here. So we're going to keep this black 
and go and paint this, I think, like a gray. See if we have a gray. I'm hoping I have spray paint um, that we can put this in. So we're going to see what we have and use what we have in the house. Now I'll be back. This is the bottom part that I lifted up earlier. And I did make a halfway mark. I put a mark here. So my husband's going to go and cut this, even though my marks isn't straight. He's going to cut this straight up. And that way we'll have a sink on one side and an oven on the other. And this is the way the bowl looks up under there. So if you can get an idea of this is how the bottom part of it's going to be. What I did is went ahead. I didn't have the, um, the painter's tape. So I used packaging tape. I'm using what I have. I'm not going out to get anything. And because we want to keep this black, and this is going to be painted gray. We want to keep this black, I think gray, maybe white, depending on what we have. So we can put the knobs actually on here. So I want this to remain so we don't have to repaint it. It's there, so why bother making double work? These are the two doors. Well, actually the one door that was at the bottom that came down. So what I am going to do is actually put a curtain at the bottom and put this up here. So... My husband is going to cut uh, cut this whole bottom off because it's too long. He's already cut it in half. One is going to be an oven door, and one is going to be um, cabinet space under the sink. So these are the two pieces that's going to be cut off now. And we will be back. Okay, our kitchen has become our work zone, right in the corner. But anyway, this is where we are. This is the top piece. So we're going to disassemble this whole bottom here because we're not going to use it. And we're going to turn the other upside down on top of the other piece. So we're going to go ahead and I see there's screws here. So we're going to uh, just go ahead and remove these screws out so that we can get rid of the top that we won't be using. This is where we are so far. I did remove the drawers and um, I turned this piece upside down. This was the bottom. Actually, this was the top, so I turned it upside down after we removed the drawers that were here. So this is the way it's going to be looking. Um, I see now where we drilled the holes in, we're going to have to kind of pass this up because I didn't leave space for the top to overlap right here. I didn't leave space for that when I was um, marked for the drill holes. So we're just going to, we account for that. And But this is basically the way it's gonna look. We did get the doors cut. And these are the doors that's gonna cover this. We trimmed every, all the excess off. So we're going to get started um, and start at painting and getting everything outlined and come back. These are some other items while we were waiting that we picked up. And this is a 11 by 14. We're going to use this for a window. Um, we want to restore. Nice lightweight foam which is kind of like what I was looking for. Very lightweight. At the ReStore, this was um, $2.99. <clears throat> we also found these CDs. We want them in black because we're going to... Let me move it away from this glare. We wanted them in black. We didn't care what name was on them because we're going to use these under the eyes. These are going to be our two front eyes on the stovetop. Also, for a dollar, we found this little chalkboard that um, we're going to use for to write our memos and stuff on. This is the upscale, y'all. <laughs> and the last thing we bought, this is like a balance or whatever. This was $2.99 at um, Invex. 
And this is like a balance. I like it because of the detail on the end. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but not a balance. This was a pillow cover. That's what it looks like. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to use this for the bottom of the, um, the curtain area. She wants it pink and white. I think this matches beautifully. So these are the additional pieces that we had um, got to kind, to kind of accessorize her kitchen. At this time, we're going to get started. Got her up early. We're going to get started with painting the exterior of it. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is just remove the top of it off so we can start painting. And we're going to paint everything right now but these two doors. She wants the doors white. It's a good thing to involve the children in because they have her say. And when they're able to um, do work in it, then they appreciate it a lot more. Okay, we're just about done. She's doing the top portion of it. And hindsight 2020. Um, I should have used a roller. But um, this is the first coat. We're going to let that dry. And this is the piece that I painted. Everything has been painted but the top. The top will not be painted. But so far, so good. It's like a real light type paint. But once the second coat gets on there, it'll stand out a lot more. Okay, this is the pillow sham. And I did take measurements for the cabinet. For the pillows, it will be 27 inches across and 14 inches in length. So while the paint is drying, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut all this off. This is just um, piping. I'm going to um, cut all this off on both edges, open it out, and measure it. Okay, I got everything. The edges cut off. This seam was already finished. And even though this is not a sewing class, so I'm not going to go too far into depth, I did turn the top down so we can put the, um, the rod through here. And with curtains, this is measuring 27 um, long across. You always want to make sure that it's more than that because what you want is the got to have room for gathering unless you just want a straight curtain. So what I'm going to do is just basically sew this. Um, I'm going to cut this in half so they'll open. And then I measure it 15 down because I'm just going to do a small hem at the bottom. Cut here and that way that'll be the opening. Okay, the curtains are done. I did cut them in half. I made it about a half inch longer. So they're measuring about 14 and a half so it can overlap. I cut out two. I cut it in half, put the topping on it, finished the edges. It took all of maybe 20 minutes to get everything cut and sewed. And this way, I put them together and she'll be, be able to open them, pull the curtains back from the middle. Now I do have a little left over. This is what's left over, I'm not sure. This was the piping, and what I did like was these details, so I don't know if I'm going to make a curtain for the window. Um, we'll see. I'm going to play it by ear, and but I really like these fringes, so you could just use these to go on a pillow for her room. All right, so the curtains are done for the bottom. This is what this is looking like. I should have had a roller. But I think it came out good. And by me using a satin, um, I really don't have to put anything over it. But I am going to put a coat of polyacrylic. Because I know that this is going to get a lot of wear and tear. And because of that, I just don't want to have to regret not doing it. I am painting this. And I am using the Rust-Oleum um, chalk paint. This is H gray. I don't remember if I got it from Lowe's or um, Home Depot. But I'm going to finish painting this, and this is going to be where the eyes are going to go for the stove. Okay, this is completely dry. I used a blow dryer. And the reason why I'm using a chop paint 
It's because chalk paint is so forgiving. Otherwise, I would have to sand it, it down because it was shiny. And the ideal thing, I think, for me would have been to put the put this on and also use a a spray paint. But in the winter time, when your house then you kind of do what you need to do. There's no way we can spray paint in the winter. So I am going to cover this with a polycrylic. And this is a clear, like almost like polyurethane, but it's water-based. And this will kind of seal, give it the sealing that we need so it'll be more protective. And I'm also going to go ahead and cover her entire um, kitchenette, everything that I painted pink. It's going to be covered with the polycrylic and give that time to dry. While I'm doing that, my husband is going to take these CDs. As you see, this is a family project. So he's going to go and spray paint these eyes solid black. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this came from Lowe's. I think this was 99 cent, a flat black. So we're going to use this, and I'm going to also cover it with the polyacrylic when it's done. And the noise you hear in the background, that's my great-granddaughter. She's on virtual schooling, and she helps out in between when she... um gets a break so I'm going to since I'm holding this with one hand I'm going to um, just show you what it looks like when it's done I am using this ready board it's like foam board that I had on hand that I'm gonna be using to make a backing for this kitchen set so I'm just gonna measure as you see I got the line drawn and I'm gonna go ahead and I measured this the size that I'm gonna be using and I went ahead and used a yardstick to connect my, my dots. And I just used a, a ruler, basically. And I am going to use this box cutter. And I'm going to cut right along this line. Okay, this is where we are so far. The foam board um, I have back there. I'm kind of using what I have in the house. And I also have these Jenga blocks just to raise it up a little. As you can see, some mistakes that we made. Um, I didn't leave allowance for this going on top. And the edge I do have to touch up. But I didn't leave allowance for this. So we're going to have to figure out how we're going to make this work because this doesn't fit now because of this being here. So I don't know if I'm going to put it on this side for her or to me that's going to interfere with the stove area so we're going to work it out in the meantime we're going to put the subway tile on the back of this we are connecting the subway tile we just laying it we're not we haven't taken the backing off we just kind of dry fitting it laying in place to make sure that this works first we only have three pieces and went back to get another one two months later and can't seem to find it nowhere. So we have blank canvas here that we're going to have to figure out how we're going to make this work. So these are our three pieces and I'm thinking about just cutting it along this line and um, see if that, seeing if that will work. I kind of taped this in place. So... I am going to have her put this in the back to see what it's looking like. I did leave space around the edges. Okay, this is the piece I just have taped. I have everything taped with scotch tape just to get an idea, get a visual of what this is going to look like. And I think these three pieces will work. What I am seeing that there is a spot here near the bottom um, I think where I cut it just a little short and the sides we're going to put molding on the side so we already knew that um, because we didn't have enough subway tiles so this is what it's looking like so far just a general layout and the biggest problem is just going to find out um, if you're going to use a full sink I mean a full faucet maybe out of PVC pipe and put it here or if we're going to go ahead and try to keep this realistic look. So that's where we are right now. So, so far so good. 
Okay, I am applying the contact paper now. I've got this all laid out and I'm just cutting strips and folding it under. Got all the pieces turned under and this is actually the full countertop. She's going to place the sink in here. Yeah, I like it. It's so adorable. Okay. So we're not going to fasten this down until we get the outside done on the top part. And then we'll put some um, um, acrylic caulk in here mm -hmm. to seal this down. Okay, I got these L brackets. And there's four of them, and I think I'm going to end up using all four. What I'm trying to do is make a partition between the sink and the oven. And I did make a dot here, a dot here, and I put a dot in the back. And this is where, and I got a dot here, so this is where the L brackets are going to kind of hold this into place. I'm going to kind of stagger it. And on top of that, because this wood isn't that thick, I did buy some smaller, some smaller nails that won't have to go down that far. We don't want it to be sticking out the other end because this is just a face. Okay, this was not thick enough. The screws was too long. So I ended up taking a paint stirrer, as you see the back of it, and I just painted it um, with some Crafts, um, Craft Smart paint just to kind of make it blend in. Nothing's holding it from the top, but this is very sturdy. It's not going anywhere. This will separate the cabinet from the oven. And I see now this piece here came loose, so I'm going to um, nail that back down and we'll get going. We're working on a stove top. There are some flaws here, but at this point I'm going to keep it moving. Um, I want to make sure that the eyes are about the same distance from the edge. What I'm gonna do is just circle this inner, just for a guide so I know where to put this back. And I'm gonna use the E6000 and just take it right around the edge and apply a little of this E6000. I've already glued the other one down. This will give it the permanent hole that I'm looking for actually that I need. And I'm going to use hot glue to give it a temporary hole to hold it into place until um, the E6000 sets in. I am just going to put a little of both of those on here as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is lay these in place. I think I figured out to be six for each one. And I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to remove it and just apply a little E6000. and hot glue. And I'm going to very carefully put this in place. You see this is a slight bit off. I'm going to adjust the other ones. 
and I'm just gonna go around until I'm done. Okay, I'm hoping to give you a good angle. This right here is a Folgers um, coffee container that I did cut in half, at least I had my husband cut in half. This is red, and what I did, I spray painted it um, gray. And this is gonna be her chandelier in her pretend kitchen. Now I have my E6000. I also grabbed some toothpicks because I just wanted to be precise. I don't want the E6000 to come out. This, these beads I picked up during the Christmas season. Actually, they're supposed to go on a Christmas tree. Well, these are gonna be the crystals on our chandelier. So what I'm gonna do is get the toothpick, get a little E6000, put it on here. I'm also gonna put a tab of hot glue. And I'm gonna lay the bead right on top. Hold it for a minute. Now I did cut this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fourteen. I cut them fourteen um, beads long. And I have eight of them. And I have eight of them. <clears throat> so the easiest way for me to do it just to Put one on one side and put one on the opposite side. So I have one there. The opposite side will be right about here. Put a little E6000 on here. Put a little bit more hot glue than I did in the beginning. And Put a bead here and hold it to the hot glue sets. This is going to be her crystal chandelier. And I'm going to put one here and here. Okay, this is what it's looking like. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing. I'm going to take this. And skip a loop and put it here. E6000. Hot glue. So I'm going to take this, skip this one, and put it here. This is what it's looking like so far. I think it came out good. Uh, what I did was took an ice pick and I put two holes in it, as you can see it. And this is where I got flathead screws. I'm going to mount this right up here. This is what the chandelier looks up. And this is one of the Dollar Tree lights. I did go ahead and put the three AAA batteries in here. So what I'm gonna do is pull the backing off of it. And I'm gonna find the center of this. I stick it right in the center. And just press it. All she has to do is do this. Here we go. That's it.